Hey, Michael O'Neill here from the Solopreneur Hour podcast and this very YouTube channel. Today, we are going to upgrade a 2009 Mac Pro in 2019 to make an incredible state-of-the-art audio and video workstation. Job security for the unemployable. The 2009 through 2013 Mac Pro desktop, otherwise known as the cheese grater, is the most upgradable, one of the most beautifully designed computers ever made. And with a firmware update, you can bring it into state-of-the-art status, and that's what I'm going to do. So, for all of these videos, including the one you're watching right now, I have been editing on a 2012 uh, MacBook Pro Retina. So it was pretty maxed out at the time, but when you get into Final Cut Pro and get into some like high level video editing, it doesn't work that well. So I thought, let me get a powerhouse video and audio editing workstation put together. So I started investigating the 2009 through 2013 Mac Pro. Now, I'm not gonna do a lot of preamble on this. I'm just gonna take you through uh, the upgrade. This is kind of a moving target in terms of the components that change uh, and that what are available. So for my requirements for this build, I did not want to muck with anything. I wanted to plug it in and I wanted it to work. That informed a few of my decisions on this. You definitely can nerd out. There's the Pixless mod that allows you to grab power from the power supply and run it to a more powerful graphics video card. I don't want to deal with any of that stuff. So. I'm gonna show you what I am doing to upgrade this machine. Uh, I'm doing this little preamble now because my OS is updating at the moment. And I'll give you kind of the idea of what the order has to be to make this thing work because you do have to go in a particular order. First and foremost, you have to choose what computer to get. If you can afford a dual CPU version of this computer, that's the holy grail. You can update those things to a 12 core editing beast if you find the right one. And honestly, the specs of the original computer don't matter that much because you're gonna replace the CPU, you're gonna replace and update the RAM, you're gonna replace the graphics card. So you're gonna update all the stuff it's holding you back anyway. So the specs of the original computer don't really matter that much. In terms of bang for the buck, the 2009 models are really the best to choose. A couple spots to check out for a 2009 Mac Pro. Other World Computing, OWC, has a bunch in stock. Uh, eBay, of course. Uh, OfferUp, Craigslist, you know, all the general online places. I found mine on eBay. It's a little bit beat up. I paid 500 bucks for a dual CPU machine, and it just arrived today. But it arrived with no... Uh, installation of an OS on it. So I have to install an OS. Uh, I had to install Mavericks because that's what was on the install disks attached to the computer. And now I'm installing El Capitan. Why does that matter? And what is Mavericks and El Capitan? Now to make these things work, you have to do it in a particular order. You have to firmware update the machine so that you can run all the latest, greatest hardware. However, you can't firmware update the machine if you have an old operating system like came on mine. In fact, mine came with zero operating system. It was 10 dot whatever, it was Mavericks, whatever that was. But you have to update to 10 dot 11, otherwise known as El Capitan, to run the firmware update. So I have to install the El Capitan OS before I can do the firmware update, before I can update the hardware. Does that make sense? Right now, my computer is updating to El Capitan. I had installed Mavericks earlier, and now I'm updating Mavericks to El Capitan, and then I'll show you guys where I get the firmware update tool and running it. It's worth noting, I'm not a techie guy. This is not something I do for a living. I'm kind of learning as I go along the way. I'm doing a bunch of research. There are a couple of great online resources like the Mac, uh, Mac Rumors forums and Mac Pro Upgrade, which is a Facebook group. So I learned a ton from those folks. I learned a ton from watching a lot of these videos. And really what it comes down to is the components I chose, I chose because they were kind of plug and play. So without further ado, let's get into those components while my computer is updating. 
Now, if you'd like to skip the preamble where I go over everything I bought and why I chose it, go ahead and fast forward. I'm not going to be offended. However, there were very specific reasons why I chose this gear. So if you can hang around for a few minutes, I think it'll be worth your time. I will have a list uh, in the description below as well as some links if you guys want to grab any of this hardware for your Mac Pro upgrade. Let's start up top and go to the bottom. So in this cool little case, this little guy, I have two Intel Xeon 5680 3.3 gigahertz, six core each processor. So this will make this computer a 12 core beast. <laughs> well, hopefully after that, it'll make it a 12 core beast. So processors first, second, and this is a really cool one. This is a Sabrent NVMe PCI uh, one terabyte SSD. So NVMe is a really, really fast uh, hard drive now, except it's not really a hard drive. It's a, it's an SSD. So uh, this really looks like a RAM chip and it mounts uh, with this heat sink that I also got. And then it mounts on this board, which goes into one of your PCI slots. Mount the heat sink on this, put this thing into the board, put the board into the computer. I got 48 gigs of RAM. Uh, it's not available yet. One thing to note about the RAM on this machine, it's actually faster to run 48 gigs than it is 64 gigs. I can't remember why, but this thing works in, in, uh, in threes better than it works in fours. So it's worth doing a bit of research on that. I realize many of you are much more technical than I am, but I've just been told that 48 is better than 64. So I'm running with 48. Now, USB 3.0, this is uh, four ports and gives you all the latest, greatest USB speeds. Easy enough, plug that into the PCI slot. Um, I have not yet gotten a um, Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi card, but you can put a Bluetooth slash Wi-Fi card in here, which enables um, AirDrop and Handshake. So if you use those things a lot in your computer life, that's the thing. And then the creme de la creme, as they say in the creme business, the ATI, Radeon RX 580 uh, Sapphire Pulse card. This is a beast, this is eight gigs. This is a beast of a video card. And this little adapter guy, which you need for this video card. So on the motherboard, there are two six pin slots uh, that give you power for your PCI slots. And this thing needs, this is hungry. This is a hungry video card. So what this little guy does is it plugs in to each one of the six pins and it comes out with an eight pin that plugs directly into this Sapphire. Um, to answer your question, will it be enough power? I'm told it will. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands of people that have done this exact installation. And like I said, plug and play. I didn't want to mess with it too much. I forgot to note, these CPUs that I got from eBay, maybe, uh, are delitted. So normally they'll have like a little, um, a little, I guess, aluminum top on them. These do not have that because if you want to up, uh, update this particular machine, I guess you need a little more room. And if you have the lids on, it's two or three mil too high. So these are delitted. You just have to be careful when you tighten the CPU uh, heatsink down, and you'll see me do that when we're done updating this firmware, which has 19 minutes remaining. So we'll see you then. Here's what I paid for all this stuff uh, as of May 2019. Whenever you're watching this, prices will certainly have gone down or up or who knows. In fact, a lot of these video card prices have come down because these video cards were used a lot in cryptocurrency mining. So it took a while for the market to fall enough that we could buy these cards again. Anyway, processors. I got two Intel 3.33 megahertz uh, processors. Is that, that right? Is it gigahertz? Gigahertz, not megahertz. Megahertz would be really slow. Uh, processors for $139, delitted. So I don't have to go through the process of removing the top of those processors. Uh, the RAM was 108 euro, which I think was like $120 after shipping uh, from a member of the Mac Pro Upgrade Forum. The video card, I paid $139 for uh, Amazon Refurbished, which has a warranty. It's got a three-month warranty on it, so I felt pretty good about it. Uh, the USB card is $39 for the 
3.1 or 3.0 USB. The hard drive was 118 for the one terabyte Sabrent and the carrier was $24 for that very hard drive. Three millimeter Allen wrench to remove the heat sinks, a couple of bucks. And this cable was, I don't know, eight bucks or something like that. And I think I also got some, um, some thermal paste, but I don't think I need it. And that's it. So all in all, I spent, I think it was $1,160 across the board. So soup to nuts, start to finish, shipping, everything delivered, about 1100 bucks for what I hope to be a world beater of a desktop computer. So right now I'm on a, if you guys Google, and pardon the audio right now, uh, if you guys Google the Mac Pro upgrade guide, there's an official Mac Pro upgrade guide. It looks like this, the definitive classic Mac Pro upgrade guide. I've just clicked on firmware, which is right here, firmware up, Upgrades, because that's the next thing I have to do is upgrade this firmware to be able to install the hardware. So if I go to my machine, which is the 2009 4.1 Mac Pro, and that's right here, I'm going to click on this first link. It goes to ifixit.com and gives you a step-by-step -step guide on how to upgrade the 2009 Mac Pro 4.1. So I'm going to do this. Um, I don't think I need to walk you through this. It's literally all spelled out right here. So I'm just going to do it. And certainly you have all the directions right here if you need them. That's not what this particular episode is about. All right, the first thing it says to do is you've got to update to Mac OS 10.11, which I've done if I go to about this Mac. I'm sorry I don't have a screen capture thing with me right now, but right now it says uh, version 10.11.6. Mac Pro early 2009, and if I look at system report, this is important, this will come in handy later. Right now it says Mac Pro 4 comma 1 in the model identifier, which is right here. All right, next, I need to do two different things to complete the upgrade. Uh, one is the Mac Pro EFI update, and the other one is the firmware update tool. So you can see right there, Mac Pro 4 comma 1, before I do these firmware upgrades, and as far as I know, the About This Mac is not going to show that it is a newer version. It's just going to show still that it's going to be in early 2009. Currently right now I've got two by 2.268, uh, 2.26 quad core Xeons. Those are going to change. And I've downloaded the tool and it's just asking me uh, if I want to update to 2010 firmware. And I do. All right, let's do this. So I've just done the firmware update, I hope. And I'm supposed to be able to click and hold this and hear a long tone if all goes well. There's the flash. I think I let it go. And there's my long tone. Here we go. All right, quick update. Been a little bit of a time here getting my firmware updated and it's because I was getting an error. The error was 5570. And if you guys are encountering that, let me just tell you how I fixed it. There's two components to this firmware update. One is the Apple EFI update. I think it's 1.5. And then the other one is the actual firmware update of 2009 to 2010. The problem is when you run the firmware update, it can't find the 1.5 EFI update because Apple has moved it. So what you do is you find that file, which is available. You have to kind of look online and look for the Apple EFI update. It's out there. I'll see if I can find where I found it and I'll link it up in the description. And all you do is once you've downloaded it, you double click on the DMG file and just have it open. So don't open the package file, just open the DMG so the package is in there, and then rerun the firmware updater and all should be well in the world. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you, don't, you can skip this. It, this doesn't happen to everybody, but it definitely happened to me. Uh, it looks like it's run the um, firmware update. It's starting now, and so hopefully the next thing we see is I have a 5,1 Mac Pro. Let's find out. All right, so here is the you know, moment of truth. So I go to Finder, 
I go about this Mac. First you go, man, this didn't work at all because when you see it, it still says early 2009. The hope is when I click system report and I go here, this, see, look at that. Mac Pro 5,1. Means we can run the latest and greatest Mojave operating system. Couple interesting things about this, uh, that there's a carrier, like a little plastic carrier on my CPUs that I didn't know about. So I'll make sure to replace those uh, with the new ones. That's one. And then two, um, it looks like these, this maybe has have already been upgraded. So I'm just right now cleaning off the thermal paste, which is this gray material and you gotta clean it off of both surfaces. Well, not really, because I have the new ones, but just giving them a quick little shot with a microfiber towel and making sure all of the thermal paste is off both. I've never done anything like this before, by the way. This is all new to me. And here are my new, well, these are the old CPUs. So I've gotta just take the plastic off of each one. I don't even know what the plastic does, but I think if, if it's there, it was probably there for a reason. And it also looks like to me that these CPU, um, that these uh, heat, I'm gonna call them heat exchangers, but it looks like they have some spacers already on them. So I think maybe this has been done before. Somebody has <clears throat> updated these, um, these uh, CPUs and and now I'm the second guy to do it. And it looks like they just go on on top, so. They only go in one way. I've got both CPUs in. I've got both plastic spacers ready to go. So now I just need a little dollop of thermal paste, I guess, on top of these bad boys. And I'm told like a little pea-sized dollop is the way to go, right in the middle. I'm thermally pasted. I have moved this CPU, so I need to put it back. So these heat sinks have a little plug at the end. You gotta just make sure that the plug lines up and you've got four holes that line up and that's where the screws are. So that's that. There's one and there's two. And now you tighten it across pattern like you're doing a wheel on a car. So I'm gonna snug these down until they're just making contact and then I will Tighten them a little bit. You don't crank them. You're just looking for a nice even pressure on this thing. And with that, the CPUs are in. I hope I have them evenly tensioned. I can slide this whole tray back in now and get to work on the rest of the computer. If I had my RAM, I would do it now, but I don't have it yet, so that will have to wait. So I'm gonna work on the PCI slots now, which is where there's two video cards, and they are little hand knobs, but they also have a Phillips screwdriver top, and it looks like it's just a little easier to use a tool for it versus my fingers. The locking plate goes first. Like that. So the PCI boards are locked in here right now. There's a little plastic piece that's right here and there's a button on it on this side. If you push the button, the entire piece slides a quarter of an inch and it says one, two, three, four. And now these PCI cards are unlocked and you can pull them out. So this one has two video cards. I'm also gonna take this moment while I'm in here there's a PRAM battery that's right here. It's probably been in here for a long time. I don't know how long it's been in, but you might as well replace it while you're in here. It is the uh, Panasonic 2032. And I just put one in this dead Mac Pro I have, so I'm just gonna throw that one in there. All right, I'm gonna install the NVMe hard drive. First of all, actually it's not a hard drive, it's a solid state drive, but 
first of all, it's tiny. Like this is a little baby drive and it's got one terabyte and it's razor fast and I'm super stoked about it. It goes into this carrier and then the carrier goes into the PCI slot. This is my adapter. These are two six pin to one eight pin. Right here and right here are the two plugs that these two guys go into. All right, I've just plugged both six pin connectors onto the motherboard. I've got just this eight pin left. There's an eight pin right there on the Sapphire. So let's stick this sucker in. This one's dual, by the way. So this actually takes up two PCI slots. Uh, two digital, two digital, two HDMI, and one DVI. So let's plug her on in here, huh? Go to your house. Yeah, I think that's it. I think we're in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's that. All right, this is the USB C 3.0 card, and I'm gonna fire this sucker into spot, I guess number three. All right, that's pretty locked in. So now I guess I just have to uh, take this cover plate and slide it back so that everything locks down. All right, I've locked this backing plate in place. I've got my USB 3. I've got my Sabrent one terabyte hard drive. I've got my Sapphire in there and I've got my new CPUs. So I guess all that's left is to start this bad boy up and see if it works. All right, moment of truth. So far, so good. There's a boot screen. That is a great start. Now, I just tried to start it from the Radeon Sapphire card, and it didn't work. So I put the original card back in. I may actually have to update to Mojave first to uh, get it to recognize that card. So I'm going to do that now. So this is the time to find out if all the other upgrades took. Here we go. All right, moment of truth. System profiler about this Mac. All right, boom, we got two 3.336 core Intel Xeons, badow. We've got a one terabyte mechanical. Let's just keep looking at this. Let's look at the old system report and see what we got here. We got a Mac Pro 5.1. We got two six core Intel Xeons. What do we got for graphics and displays? Yep, no display. All right, so this thing is showing that something exists. It's just not there yet. I think I've got to update. And then what else am I missing here? Uh, USB, I think it's there. USB 3.0 bus, and that is mounted in the right spot. So that's good. The, the, the main ones are done. I just got to get the, uh, I've got to get Mojave installed. Hey, so it's a couple days later and I've been living with the computer now for a few days, but I wanted to address just a couple of quick things before you embarked on this journey yourself. Number one is that it definitely took longer than I thought it would. So I thought I would just throw the hardware in and turn the thing on, it was gonna rip. There was a couple of issues. Number one, the NVMe drive, which is the solid state drive, that's in the PCI slot the computer recognized it as an external drive and not an internal drive. What that means is it's not typically bootable and there's a bunch of things you can't do because the computer thinks it's an external hard drive that you can just eject. Now there's a fix for it. Some brilliant nerd, uh, much more brilliant than I, has invented a, uh, a fix called INI. I-N-N-I-E, 
and it's on the Mac Rumors forum. I've got it linked in the description. You're looking for post number nine of the link I'm about to send where they describe exactly how to get your computer to recognize an NVMe drive as an internal drive. So that is first and foremost that you gotta do that. The other thing is the PCI USB card, that's the 3.0 USB card, doesn't allow devices to stay active when the computer is asleep. Meaning if the computer sleeps and I've got my keyboard plugged into it, I can't hit the keyboard to wake the computer back up. So I have to plug the USB ports of the mouse in the computer into the OEM USB slots of the computer. And I have to save the PCI USB for hard drives and things that need a lot more speed. Finally, the great news. I used Geekbench to benchmark this machine, and mind you, I have not yet received my 48 gigs of RAM. So this is just with the standard eight gigs of RAM. And it's Geekbench uh, multi-core score is 24,238. And if you look at the ranking of all the fastest, well, all the Macs at all, that is the eighth fastest Mac of all time. And I built this machine for like 1100 bucks. So I have not yet edited in Final Cut Pro. This very video you're watching right now is the first video I will have edited in Final Cut Pro with all of its fancy processing power. So with that, I hope you got a little something out of this. I'm a complete beginner at this. So if you have a lot of questions, I don't know if I can answer them, but I will do my best. Feel free to hit me in the comments with whatever you like. And I hope your podcast is smoother. I hope your YouTube channel is faster and I hope you guys have a great day.